What would I say are the top future dilemmas for mental health clinicians? Well, first and foremost, billing issues. People don't realize that actually insurance companies don't often specify what a member's uh, virtual behavioral health coverage is. They might have medical, they might have dental, they might have in-person psychiatric coverage, but they don't actually say what the virtual behavioral health coverage. So you have to call the insurance company and it's a pretty lengthy call most of the time. Also, insurance companies are reversing the covert coverage at varying times. So different insurance companies have ended their covert coverage, which is pretty confusing for a lot of practices. Insurance plans with the same company can be very different. For example, you might have Aetna and certain plans within Aetna, if they're self-insured or not, might not actually cover virtual care or they might specify that it has to be with a particular company. I think that creates a conflict of interest because the individual is bound to go to a particular company that just seems like it must violate some sort of referral law, um, Stark law, because you can't self-refer, but this insurance company basically dictates for virtual care you need to use a particular company. It's very confusing for a lot of uh, first-time practice owners and also patients alike that the insurance company can give you an estimate of benefits, but they're not bound to give you accurate um, reporting. And so they can actually change their mind after the claim comes back. There's no guarantee that they're actually going to uphold that coverage. So you can give them a recording of the phone call and they may uphold the appeal afterwards, but um, it can still come back the opposite of what they told you. And this happens more than you think it would. There's no consensus among insurance companies actually what uh, type of billing code uh, modifier to use for a particular place of service. So each place of service, whether it's in the office, hospital system, or virtual, they um, have different number associated with them. But the problem is with different insurance companies, you have different place of service and different modifier codes. Um, so you don't know which one to use. There's actually a really good article that's called, Is This the Worst Telehealth Law of All Time? And it's um, states how Medicare actually recently passed a law that there's an in-person requirement every six months. So you can't just fully do virtual with a Medicare recipient. They have to actually be seen every six months in person. To make matters worse, the, the laws haven't caught up to the, the virtual visit landscape. So for example, patients frequently travel and they have the expectation they could see the doctor wherever they go, right? That makes sense. Um, they're the same person, same doctor, why not just see them wherever they go? Well, it actually depends on where the person is physically located. And what if they're in the air texting their therapist? Because now you know, you could text in the air, you can text and there's some therapy uh, practices that allow texting for therapy nowadays. What jurisdiction is that in? You know, why haven't we changed the laws to catch up to these new technologic advances?